Welcome to another episode of Ingrid's World. What happens when you have to get your home ready to be sold? We have a guest that will give us a few tips on how to sell our home. Our team correspondent will take us to the Ear and Space Museum, a place not to miss when you're in Washington, D.C. area. And we will wrap up the show cooking with Chef April, who has the gift to make the ordinary dishes extraordinary. Now let's welcome to the show Bruce McBarnett. Bruce is a lawyer, former attorney for the U.S. Senate, and former legal counsel for Fannie Mae, which is Federal National Mortgage Association. He was also a captain and lawyer for the U.S. Army. He is currently with Roger Nakawari's group and Remax Alliance. He is also president of Summit connection, a real estate investment firm, and he also has taught real estate investment courses for many colleges in the area. Well, Bruce, first of all, thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's always a pleasure being on your and show. And let's get here. back to it. I said, um, yeah. Roger, what's, how do you pronounce his Nakazawa. name? Nakazawa. Roger Nakazawa. Nakazawa. Group Nakazawa. Over at the Remax Allegiance. That's great. Oh, that's <laughs> excellent. And you know, I got excited about you coming back on the show because mm. you know what you're talking about. You've been in this industry and you know some of the things that are happening so and I think that as we talk about um, what we're doing in terms of the real estate market what's some of the observations that you're making mm -hmm. well it's, we have a very interesting real estate market in here in the Washington DC metropolitan area fortunately we are uh, buffeted uh, to some extent uh, from some of the uh, gyrations that take place throughout the rest of the nation in that uh, the United States government, although it may go out of um, business from time to time, mm -hmm. only briefly, is generally uh, in business and consequently so many of the people in our D.C. metropolitan area are in a position where they have employment that is relatively guaranteed wow. compared to uh, so many other parts of the country. So even when uh, we were experiencing a recession, we found that in the D.C. metropolitan area, we were protected from some of the consequences of that relative to some of the people in other parts of the country. Of course, we do have our own particular issues when our government uh, shuts down, as it does once every 17 years or so, but uh, mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. very minor compared to what you see happening in other parts of the country. So people who are watching this show, they're saying, okay, you know, the economy is changing. I think it's now the right time for me to put my house on the market. Mm -hmm. What improvements should I kind of like think about making if I want to really be a successful seller? Bring in good, the dollar? good, good question. Yeah, there are a number of things that people can do to enhance the ability for them to sell their properties. I uh, teach a course on real estate investment, and uh, one of the things I emphasize to my students is you've got to make the curb appeal look good. In real estate, uh. we have a term called curb appeal. It's all about making the house look good on the outside. So simply doing very minor things like just cutting the grass can enhance the value of your property thousands of dollars. And then uh, also, you know, keeping the hedges trim well, painting the, the property, all these things make it appealing so people will actually want to walk inside uh, of your house. They would point it to the Yes, I once uh, saw a situation where a seller ran out of money, couldn't um, do anything uh, with respect to the outside of their home. Um, grass was long. Bushes were not kept. Consequently, that person who could have sold their property for like $420,000, which is what the price was for similar houses, ended up selling their home for $100,000 less. $100,000 less. Yeah, $100,000 less because people didn't want to go inside and take a look at that property. Because if it doesn't look good in the outside, who's going to want to look at the inside? So just simply taking care of the outside of their home improving that curb appeal, big factor. And then improvements that you can make inside the home. Some often buyers are looking for special types of improvements, special types of features, and the house comes with the feature for them. They're buying features. So 
you never know what feature really turns on a buyer. So make all the features inside of the home look good. I once uh, was representing uh, a client who was uh, looking to rent a home, and the thing that really turned them on was paint jobs. They were really excited about good paint jobs. And mm. it turned out that uh, we boiled down <laughs> the properties to two. Both had ex identical floor plans. Both had new paint jobs. One paint job was a little bit better than the other. Both were new paint jobs. The one that had the better paint job was renting for $200 more per month than the one that didn't have as good a paint job. She went for the one that had the better paint job. She was willing to pay $200 a month more, in other words, $2,400 wow. a year more <laughs> for the wow. one that had not just a new paint job, but which had the better new paint job. Mm. So uh, little things like that, you never know what turns on a buyer. So have all of the features in your home looking good, looking upgraded. Another thing that you can do is uh, show the property furnished. Um, that increases the value of the home, uh, believe it or not, so much that some realtors, what they'll do is if they're selling a vacant home, they'll hire a company to come in and put furniture in it no, just to show the really? home because it makes that much of a difference. That's right. And I and love your tips. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you said Thank that you, they would show, and you said make sure the home is furnished. That's wow. right. That's right. That's an important feature. Uh, even if it's just stage furnishing. <laughs> even if it's uh, just stage furnishing. Put it in there uh, because it, it turns on... Uh, Buyers. Sometimes buyers can't see behind, beyond the empty walls. Sometimes they actually have to f have physical furnishing in, furniture in there so they can visualize what it might look like with their furniture in. And also the furnishing might give uh, the buyers some ideas of, of dimensions and, and uh, schemes that they might be able to use. And then uh, another thing that you want to think about besides improving the curb appeal and putting in some improvements and uh, furnishing is also uh, you want to get the community involved in selling the home. Wow. Let people know. There's always that busy buddy in the neighborhood who <laughs> wants to know everybody's business. Not only do they know the people who live in the neighborhood, they know their relatives, their in-laws, their friends, they know everything. <laughs> Let that person know that you're selling the property. Okay. They'll sell it for you. <laughs> they'll sell it for you. Okay. That's right. Okay. Uh, they'll get the word out there. And the other thing you want to do is you want to also um, bear in mind that buyers are not that excited about having you showing your property okay. to them. Okay. Because sellers tend to put a lot of pressure on buyers, okay. even without knowing it. Mm -hmm. And buyers don't feel candid talking about their properties okay. with, um, with the seller right there. So have somebody else show the property for you. It doesn't necessarily have to be a realtor, okay. but have somebody show the property other than yourself, okay? Excellent. And don't go tracing behind the person who's showing the property <laughs> for you. Go take a walk someplace. Go take the walk. Take. So um, these are some of the tips that I would suggest. So we're, we're going to wrap our uh, segment up, but you gave some great tips. You have five tips, but actually when I looked at it, it was more yes. like ten because they're <laughs> great. No, sure, they really are. Um, and it's something for us to think about. Sure. And, uh, you know, there's so much I could share with the limited time, but if anybody has questions, they can feel free to give me there a call. There you go. You know, Bruce McBarnett uh, at 703-404-8429. Give me a call. I'd be happy to talk with you about selling your property ah. and giving you some ideas. Perfect way to end the segment. Thank you for Thank being you. here. My pleasure. Good, good. Thank you very much, Ingrid. Well, we're up to our favorite correspondent. And our favorite correspondent is our team, Anya Wheeler. So, Anya, where are you going to be taking us this time? We are visiting the Air and Space Museum located in Chantilly, Virginia. This is one of my favorite places to visit. Admission to the museum is free and $15 to park your car. Where else can you see an aircraft that flew from Los Angeles to Washington, D.C. in one hour, four minutes, and 20 seconds? Hey, that is 2,124 miles per hour. 
Visiting the Air and Space Museum is a great place for family fun for all ages. There you can see thousands of aviation and space artifacts. You may even step into a cockpit and imagine yourself flying a plane like this little girl. One warning, make sure you have plenty of time for your visit. I say you need at least two hours to truly enjoy the Air and Space Museum. So visit the Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum, Advar Hazy Center, 14390 Air and Space Museum Parkway, Chantilly, Virginia, 20151. Open 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. every day except December 25th. See their website for more information. Hope to see you there. Thank you, Anya, for taking us to the Air and Space Museum. What a great place to visit. Now it's time to welcome Chef April back to the show, who makes everything tasty and attractive. Welcome, Chef April. Thank you, thank you. So what's cooking in the kitchen? Today we will be cooking a seasonal vegetable ceviche. And ceviche is pretty much a non-cooking method used for fish or seafood. But what we're going to do is marinate our vegetables in lime mm. dressing. And then secondly, we're going to make a pork tenderloin with a port wine sauce and dried fruit. Ooh, yummy. Yeah. All right. So the first thing that we're going to do here is get our dressing together. And this is a dressing that you can do with anything. Um, we have a little bit of olive oil here. And what we have here is a lime. So what I want to do is just get the zest of the lime. And that brightens anything. So whether you use, you know, lime or lemon, it definitely will brighten your salad. Then what we also want to do is get the juice of the lime. And I mean, if you don't have one of these nice little contractions here, but you can always just juice it yourself. Uh, oh my goodness. But it pretty much squeezes it all out wow. for you. So we're just going to use the juice of one lime. Okay. Yep. Hey, that makes life easier. It sure does. Excellent. And then a little salt. And what I have here are some chives. And that is pretty much our dressing. I love the fact that you're using fresh, you know, all your fresh ingredients. Thank there. you. And you can use any sort of seasonal ingredients that you want for that season, whether it's winter, fall, or spring, or summer. Right here, I have some lima beans, which are nice spring um, vegetables to use. Mm -hmm. And basically what you would do is just boil them with some water okay. and throw them in here. As well as we have some fresh corn here. Corn is also a nice spring ingredient. And the one thing that I love about this dish is that it's, it's colorful and it's inviting and people just love yes, to eat it. Yes. So we also have here some tomatoes and we have here a few nectarines. You can use tangerines or anything mm -hmm. like that. And then also we have here some bell peppers. Okay. Orange bell peppers, which are sweeter orange. than the green. Oh, orange are sweeter. I didn't yes. even know that. So stay away from the green ones. Use either orange or red. Orange or red. Yep. Here we have some shallots. I like using shallots instead of onions. Um, it doesn't have that really strong onion taste right. to it. And then here we have some peppers. Now you can use jalapeno, habanero. It just depends on what you, you know, you prefer. The one last ingredient here is an avocado. And the avocado just adds that nice creamy texture to it. Yes. So what we're going to do is just add this in here and then Mix it up. And what's the great thing about this is that you just put it in the refrigerator for no more than two hours and it will marinate mm. and be nice and yummy. I also have some cilantro here that you want to throw on. Now, you know, I can't remember all of this. Are you going to, how are we going to be able to find this great recipe? What I'll do, I, I have healthy recipes on my website. Yay. And this is actually a healthy recipe. Yay. So I will post this on my website, www.ivyflavor.com. Okay. So we're done here and you put saran wrap over it and that's a side dish that's for it. Yeah. And that's a side dish. That is and it's it. a healthy side dish. It is. It is. Yay. 
very, very nice. Thank you, thank you. And what's our next So one? the next thing that we're going to do here is our pork tenderloin. Okay. I'll squeeze over here. Mm -hmm. And what you see here is a cast iron skillet. Now, you can use any sort of saute pan, mm -hmm. but I love cast iron skillets because it will give me the sear that I want on my meat. Mm -hmm. while keeping it nice and moist. Mm -hmm. And although I am doing a pork tenderloin today, which is what you see here, is half of one, um, you can also use a turkey tenderloin or any other tenderloin of your choice. What we're going to do is salt this nice protein. Wow, and I see you're using like a, a coarse. This is a kosher salt. Oh, it's kosher salt. That I like to use and a little bit of freshly ground cracked pepper. And basically what will happen is, we'll put some olive oil in here. Let me grab some olive oil right here in our cast iron skillet. And mm -hmm. we'll put our tenderloin in here. I will not put it in here for the purpose of showing you the rest of the, the okay. way it's supposed to go. Okay. But this is exactly the type of color that you want. Oh, you want that nice thank crust. Thank you for doing that. Yep. Yeah. And typically you want to turn your the heat on high and you want to hear that sizzling, you know, and it's you probably going to... You want to hear it sizzle. Yep. Okay. And then you want to keep turning it on each side, just like this. Nice. You know, and you leave it for maybe two minutes on each side, right? Now nice. you're not cooking it all the way. Once each side has a nice color to it, you'll take it off and place it on a sheet pan like this and put it in the oven. The very next thing is what we have here. You want to keep the same type of um, okay. same pot. And so the good thing about this is that there's a lot of different flavors to it. We have a little bit of celery, uh -huh. more shallots, garlic. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. And then the next thing we have are dried fruit. We have nice. cranberries, really? uh, blueberries, apricots, apples, anything that you'd want to purchase. Okay, you have yep. inspired me. <laughs> so we also have here uh, some apples and pine nuts as well. You don't have to use the nuts if you don't. Yeah, but like I the love the texture and the different flavors that each piece brings. Oh my gosh. And this is such a fragrant dish. Your, your other segment oh. was about you know, selling a home, yeah. right? And you can maybe cook this the night before and still have this nice fragrant um, smell in your home because you're using also you cinnamon see? sticks. Oh, exactly. So basically just sauteing everything. You want a nice color on your pine nuts. And the next thing that we're going to throw in here is port wine. Mm. It's a fortified wine, um, meaning that the alcohol content is a little heavier than usual. Mm -hmm. And then also we have here some pomegranate juice. Oh my gosh. We're going to crank this up on high, simmer, simmer for about 15 minutes. And your pork tenderloin was actually in the oven while we're making this sauce, finishing up for about 10 yeah. minutes, 15 or so minutes. I wish everyone could just smell yeah, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> and then also what we're going to do is add a little bit more salt. Oh my gosh. And then at the very end, we'll add some chicken stock to it. Oh my goodness. And basically everything will um, come together. It's going to simmer down and reduce into a sauce, a very nice syrupy sauce. And that's pretty much what you see here. Oh. And then in the end, you'll add your pork tenderloin back in here. And this is perfect for any holiday, really. And you know what? How long do you think this would take to, to fix something like this? Oh, this actually probably no more than 30 minutes. This is a 30 minute <coughs> meal. Pardon me, that's excellent, excellent. Yes. And um, another thing is this could be an appetizer as well. If you slice it the way I did here and put it over a baguette, you can slice it and put it um, over a baguette. <coughs> I know, it's a lot of smells in here. <laughs> but it's good smells. <laughs> it's great smells because that's what it's all about. So what I'll do is um, plate here. And I think we have a taster here. I think we have Isis Wallace, who has volunteered to come and taste. Why don't you have a steam right there? There go. I hope you like your vegetables, Isis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. You do? Okay. And I'll go ahead and just bring this to the table. Here and serve you. Yummy. I'll just spoon some of this over. And this is just the apricots and 
Wow. Yeah. Blueberries. There you go. Mm. There you go. Enjoy. Yum. Yummy. Going to try it out? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see how this tastes. Mm. Mm. Spices can last anywhere from two to three years. Okay. Now, obviously, you want fresher ingredients, you know, to bring out the flavor. Okay. But then if you wait two to three years, you're going to lose some of that flavor as well. So, you know, again, it can last two to three years. Spices don't spoil. Okay. Uh, right. So, you know, Excellent. use your spices, use the ones that are in there and refresh every once in a while. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this segment. You were fantastic as thank always. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having Not me again. Not to miss <laughs> Tasty Food. This is where you need to go. Thank you, Chef Paper. You're as welcome. As always, thank you for having me. fantastic meal. And thank you. you. never disappoint us. <laughs> thank you. So we learned how to sell a home. We took the pressure off and visited the Air and Space Museum. And then we went home to eat some good food. Thank you guests for showing us how we can do it all and be happy. And in the words of Mahatma Gandhi, happiness is what, is what you think and what you say and what you do are all in harmony. The Law Office of J.M. Reynolds is located at 3102 Golosky Boulevard, Suite 202, Woodbridge, Virginia, 22192. They can be reached at 703-680-2358. Or you can simply fax them at 703-991-4572. But I would also like to recommend reaching their website, which is jmreynoldspllc.com. For show information, please see ingridsworld.org, and I thank you for watching.